Welcome back. Day five. It's Monday. We're ready for a new week of math. It's June 8th and we're on page 9 and 10. But it's Monday and before we get started, we must do our shout outs. And don't forget, we've got to honor all of our virtual birthdays for the last 30 days. So we've got our bell dug out today. And we've got our Speaker ready to go and it's time for shout outs. So let's start out with period three. This week we've got Timothy, Abby, Ari, Noah, KG, Autumn, JD, Grace, Dylan, JC, Annie, Cadence, and Ryan. And special shout outs to all those doing Mathia. Autumn, thank you. And finishing Mathia is Grace and Cadence. Let's go on to period four. Darrell, Morgan, Austin, Quinn, Kira, Gideon, Ariam, Bailey, Christy, and Austin. And special shout outs to those Mathia folks, Gideon and Ariam, who's finished Mathia. Heading on to period five. Jaden, Monroe, Lucas, Sydney, Elise, Mackenzie, Cole, Tessa, Cam, Joshua, Lane, Kaylin, Tanya, Abigail, Bree, and Zach. And again, those special shout outs for Mathia, Lucas, and Abigail. And Tanya has completed Mathia. And birthdays for the last month. Let's honor those folks. Kaylee Bellastrasi, May 23rd. Tessa Jolly, May 25th. Jake, May 31st. Tori, June 6th. Timothy, Mr. Campton, June 10th. Hillary, June 13th. And because this is going to be our last shout outs for birthdays, I wanted to honor Christy, who's the week after school ends, June 20th. Again, we want to honor all those folks for reaching out. Text email, submissions of work, extra work. I want to thank you for that. And don't quit now. We've got only eight class days left. Four down, eight to go, 20 minutes a day, right? We're going to ring that bell one more time, and then we'll get started with our math for the day. See you real soon. Okay, welcome back. Here's the math piece for day five, June 8th. All right, we're on a Monday. We've got a virtual class coming up later today. We've done our shout outs for the day. And now we want to actually do page nine and 10. Page nine has a graph. Page 10 has the math for the St. Louis Arch. Now I know today will take a little longer than 20 minutes. But I'm hoping you're willing to go watch at least a couple of the four videos I've posted on the St. Louis Arch, the Gateway to the West. Okay, It's a great example of ingenuity and entrepreneurship in America as we moved west. And at the time when they built the St. Louis Arch, it was one of the wonders of the world. Serious. Okay? So, here is today's math, okay? You have this sheet of paper, it was mailed to you, okay? So you don't even have to draw anything out, it was already mailed to you. And it says, draw the St. Louis Arch model, what we came up with using technology, the three known points, we need three points, okay? Now to make the math easier, the very first point we put is where the arch starts in the corner. So everybody put a big dot at zero, zero and label it, okay? Now the arch, according to those videos, now remember, I hope you watched a couple of those videos, is 630 feet across the bottom, okay? So five, six, seven, about right there. We're gonna mark that 630 comma zero, okay? 
Those are the two feet. Now they built this arch, okay? We know what an arch looks like, okay? So halfway, it's gotta be symmetrical. All quadratics are symmetrical, like a butterfly, okay? So we gotta go halfway. Half of 630 is 315. So find 315. Draw your dotted line up. That's going to be our line of symmetry. And it's 630 feet across the top. Put a big dot right there. And you might as well label that the vertex, right? And the vertex is 315 comma 630. Okay, now draw the St. Louis Arch. Okay, now there's several reasons to do this assignment. One, it's real world math. And in the third video, if you actually watch it, they show the engineers before it was ever built discuss the quadratic portion of the arch. It was so cool. All right, so we have an arch. One of the other reasons I love this assignment, besides real world, besides it's algebra two, besides it's got all this math, is it's a great opportunity for you to refresh your memory. Where's the vertex? Done, okay? Vertex, okay? Where's the endpoints? Done. Symmetry. Some teachers LOS, some teachers AOS, the line of symmetry. Now remember we write it as a line. So I'm gonna write the line of symmetry, x equals 315, okay? Make sure you label that. The y-intercept. The y-intercept is an x-intercept also. That helps the math be a little bit easier, but you have to have a starting point. Let's do it. So this is the y-intercept. And this is an x-intercept, okay? So make sure we mark both of those. Now, remember last year, if you had me as an Algebra 1 teacher, I tried to convince you that factors, solutions, zeros, they're all almost synonyms of each other, okay? So the zeros, here's a zero. Here's a zero. This is also an x-intercept. Okay? The idea of a solution. If this was a ball flying, solution number one is where it starts. Poof. Boom. Where it lands. This is a solution. This is a solution. Okay? So, for the solutions, x can equal zero x could equal 630. That causes no motion where the ball starts and where the ball lands. Those are the solutions. And then the rest of the week we're going to work on factoring, so we might as well write the factors. This at 630 we write x minus 630, and this one is at 0 x minus zero. Look at all the knowledge you've accumulated over all the years. Look how much you can write on this, okay? Just by knowing a few facts, okay? So, you've got your graph. We have all of our labels. I see I interchanged a couple of numbers here. Let me fix this, okay? Three hundred and fifteen comma six thirty. All right. So here was the first part of today's lesson. Okay. Now, on the back of that sheet, we're going to be doing the math. Now you're going to have to pull this sheet up because this wasn't part of your mailer. Okay. We want to actually write the equation that models this shape. Okay. 
the generic form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, we did that in Algebra 1. We want to actually come up with that equation, and we're going to be perfect. The numbers for the St. Louis arch are perfect. We're actually going to get that momentarily. Okay, how do we do that? We know three points. X comma Y, 0, 0. X comma Y, the vertex, okay? And X comma Y, boom. Given any three data points, we can actually calculate that equation. Serious. All right, so now I'm going to clear the board so we can fill this with math. So find yourself a blank sheet of paper. Go ahead and click on this JPEG if you need to, and I'll be right back. All right, thanks for coming back. Now, cleared the board. We have this equation, AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, how do I use it? You might remember in Algebra 1, simultaneous equations. Two equations, two unknowns, solve it, okay? Three equations, three unknowns, solve it. Whoa! We can do that because we started at the origin, zero, zero. This is an X, this is a Y. Let's just write it out, okay? So, I'm going to use the letter Y, but it's zero. Substitute, replace, solve, okay? Wherever you see the letter X, put a zero. Wherever you see F of X, the Y, put a zero, okay? So, equation number one, zero equals A times zero squared plus B times zero plus C. Now, all we did was substitute, zero, zero, okay? Second equation, 630 equals A, 315 squared plus B times 315 plus C, okay? Let's do it again, 630 comma zero. Remember, that's where it ends on the other side. 0 equals A, 630 squared, plus B, 630, plus C. Three equations, three unknowns. Not that big a deal. And here's why. Right here, okay? By using 0, 0, we really simplified the math. So watch this. This becomes zero equals zero plus zero plus C. By using the origin zero, zero for one of our endpoints, C is zero. We just got rid of those two variables, okay? So I'm actually gonna simplify the math because that's zero and that's zero, okay? Now, I recommend you get your calculator out because it's gonna be an awfully faster by doing it that way, okay? Now, two equations, two unknowns. Watch how this just falls out, okay? We're going to multiply this through, 630 equals 315 times 315 99,225 A plus 315 B. Okay, do the last one. Zero equals 630 times 630, 396,900 A plus 630 B. Now, 
those of you that remember systems of equations, this really isn't that scary because 315 and 630, how are they related? How many of these are in this? Remember? Two. If I take the entire upper equation and multiply by a negative two, the b's will go away, I solve for a, and I'm almost done. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm gonna rewrite this equation. Just bring it down here, okay? All right, so 630 equals 99225A plus 315B, okay? I want to multiply. I'm going to multiply that whole equation by a negative 2. Distribute, distribute, distribute giving us negative, or we got 1260, negative 1260 equals, double that, 198,450. And it's a negative, a negative, a negative, minus 630B. Well now, just bring this down, subtract 396900 a plus 630B. For those of you that remember solving systems, this is the elimination method. Poof, gone. Isn't that neat? All right, so now we're left with negative 1260 equals, and that turns out to be 198450A, divide by that, and you're going to say, money is going to be negative, has to be negative, smiley face positive, negative gives us the arch look, right? Okay, so now we want to be perfect. We want to use every decimal point, okay? So I'm going to write out to a whole bunch of decimal points. A is going to be negative point zero zero six three four nine two Oh, six, three. When you do this, write out as many decimal points as you possibly can so that you're perfect in the final equation. Okay? Well, now, Monty, how does that help me? Huh? How can I, if I have A, how do I get B? If I have the letter A, and I do, how do I get the letter B? Okay. Substitute, replace, solve. Take this and either put it here, here, or here. Any of them. Serious. Okay. Hmm. 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 How do I do that? Okay. We need some more room. So let's erase. All of this give us some more room, okay? All right, got to take our A. And if you had me for algebra, you always know that I like to use the top equation, okay? So I'm going to use, actually, my math. I used the second one because it was equal to zero, okay? So now I came here. Let's take this. And go back up there. All right? So, zero equals. Let's write this out. Three, nine, six, nine hundred 
times all of that. Substitute. Replace. Solve. Plus 630B. If you do this math, 0 equals negative 2520 plus 630B. Let's add the 2520 to both sides. Twenty five twenty equals six hundred thirty B. Divide both sides by six thirty and B comes out to oh, wow four. <laughs> Who'd have thought, after all those decimal points, we would have got the number four? All right. Now, you may not be excited, but watch this next step, okay? Our final answer, okay? Now, remember, AX squared plus BX plus C. We got A. We got B. We got C. No kidding. Our final function for the St. Louis arch is y equals that number, negative point zero zero six three four nine two oh six three x squared plus four x plus zero. Okay, now take your calculator, okay? Now I've got the Wabbit, I'm gonna post it up here so that you can see it. But if I go to Y equals and I type in negative point zero zero six three nine two oh six three. Whoop, I forgot the four. Negative point zero zero six three four nine two oh six three x squared plus 4x, and I hit table, second graph. Let's find those points. Ready? I'm going to go to 0, 0, second table. Oh, it's perfect. At 0, 0, I put in a 0, 0 times all this, 0 times all that, 0. Now comes the hard one. Let's go to second table set, 315. Remember the middle point? The middle point, 630. If I type in 315, I get 630. Type in 630. Point zero 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 two. Point zero 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 two. That is accurate. Wow. The St. Louis Arch. At the time, they thought of it as one of the seven wonders of the world. And we just calculated the equation that models the St. Louis Arch. Isn't that fun? And you actually have the math skills to do this. Okay? All right. Now, that basically completes day five, June 8th. Okay? Page nine and ten, real world math. I hope you're excited about it. But I'm going to post an extra video in a minute because I want to do all of this for what I created. Remember my toilet paper arch? Let's see if we can do the same thing. So, on the calendar, on the email I'm going to send you, there's two links. There's a bonus video today for my arch, the toilet paper arch. I'll see you momentarily. I hope you join me.